The following documentation is of a grain salvage operation and the subsequent damage mitigation of a large corrugated steel bin. Heating grain, which formed a large burning core, mandated the emergency operation. In viewing this video, it is important to remember that the salvage crew has had over 150 combined years of experience working grain fires. The equipment used has been specially designed or modified to handle such losses. Any attempt to duplicate the procedures described must be thought through completely. The storage structure with the problem was manufactured by GSI. It had a capacity of 500,000 bushels, a sidewall height of 69 foot 4 inches, and was constructed of corrugated galvanized steel. It rested on a concrete pad that elevated the bin floor to a height of 6 foot above ground level. The structure at the time of loss contained approximately 320,000 bushels of corn from the 2008 crop year. It had originated in an open air bunker storage facility. The corn going into the structure had an abnormal amount of damage along with a higher than average amount of fines. The bin originally had been filled to capacity. Shortly afterward, about 100,000 bushels was drained off through the center draw and side draw. The primary means for offloading this bin was a drag conveyor housed in a tunnel under the floor of the structure. The drag originated at the north end of the tunnel and was fed by seven slide-gated openings in the floor. This conveyor discharged into a leg in the south side of the structure which moved the corn overhead into the facility's main grain handling system. For us to consider using this system to unload the bin meant we would be placing the entire facility at risk and hinder the normal day-to-day -day activities of the business. Aeration for, for the bin was provided by two systems using two pusher fans each to pressurize perforated floor panels. One system lay to the east of the tunnel and one to the west. A manhole access was located in the roof near the bin wall between the west truck draw loadout and the south tunnel opening. The entire facility dust control systems were located at various points atop the west row of storage structures. These systems discharged into the open atmosphere causing grain dust clouds at ground level on calm days presented, presenting a definite cause for concern under these circumstances. The loss structure was situated in the center of the entire storage facility adjacent to a row of bins to the west which culminated with a wood cribbed elevator complex housing the main office to the north. Located approximately 80 feet across the driveway to the northeast of the bin was a metal clad flat storage building housing farm chemicals. Immediately to the west of this building and north of the 500,000 bushel bin was the mobile equipment fueling station and associated storage tanks which dispensed gas, diesel fuel, and propane. The small community where the loss occurred had a population less than 200 people. The fire department was manned by local vol volunteers operating under reciprocity agreements with neighboring departments. Many of the local firefighters were employees of the elevator. We determined that the town's water supply would not be adequate for a combined firefighting effort if the salvage operation went awry. The chain of events that led to determining the type of salvage operation that was implemented. We at Gregerson Salvage Incorporated were called at approximately 2 p.m. Tuesday, September 22nd. Dennis and Colin Gregerson arrived on site 7 p.m. that same evening to find the elevator employees loading a tandem truck from a small grain vacuum at the north end of the drag conveyor. A fire truck was parked next to the back. The drag that normally moved grain to a leg located on the south side of the bin was now reversed and moved grain north to the end of the tunnelway where it dropped into the vacuum. The manager advised us that an explosion had taken place in the floor aeration circuit east of the tunnel. It had blown flames out around both fans on this circuit. He directed that all fan openings be covered to prevent drafting. His employees had drawn off three tandem loads or about 1500 bushel from the center floor opening and were starting to on the fourth. 
The corn was starting to flow slower and burning chunks of corn were beginning to clog the opening. Some employees were trying to break up these clumps. We advised the manager to water the opening, hose down the burning pieces, and close the slide gate. We felt that the insured was not prepared to handle a volatile and rapidly es escalating situation, especially at night. The manager explained that approximately 120,000 bushel had been removed at various times over the last six months. No problems were noted previous to calling the insurance company earlier that day. This initial information led us to believe that the core was of a normal size and that we'd handle it easily using our specially designed grain vacuums. We made plans to make two openings in the bin sheets, one on the north side and one on the south. The holes were to be slightly above the grain line directly opposite of each other. Vac pipes would be installed through the openings and project approximately 15 feet inside the bin wall. The vacuums would remove the tainted atmosphere and bring in fresh outside air. Once the air quality improved to where the crew could enter the bin, they would water down the core, break it up, and vacuum it out. We made provisions to have two vacs on site the following morning, along with a telescopic man lift capable of reaching the entire sidewall height to 76 feet. A meeting was held to get acquainted with the fire chief and his assistant. He agreed that a fire watch was necessary and made the arrangements. Colin advised laying out an empty inch and a half line to the top roof opening that could be charged if needed. We provided the chief of our 24-hour contact numbers and where we would be staying. The events of Wednesday, September 23rd. Colin procured air samples from the roof access to establish the quality of the atmosphere of the headspace prior to proceeding with the venting operation. He sampled the LEL, lower explosive limit, and also for the presence of carbon monoxide and carbon dioxide. At a level of approximately four feet below the access opening, both indicators maxed out. The atmosphere in the tank was both combustible and non-breathable. We determined that the headspace in the bin was unfit for entrance and we would need to change the atmosphere in the tank to make it suitable if we were to have men inside. We estimated that the headspace contained approximately 150,000 bushels of bad air or about 190,000 cubic foot of space. The combined air moving capability of the two grain vacuums was in excess of 6,000 bushels per minute. In theory, this meant that we could change the atmosphere and the headspace every 30 minutes. The grain vacuums were engaged and brought up to full operating speed. Air sample readings from the vac's discharge were immediately taken. Both meters again registered to the full range. Subsequent readings were taken every 30 minutes from the discharges of each vac as well as from the roof opening of the bin itself. The vacs were allowed to run continually over the course of the next four hours. During this time, discharge from the vacs continued to max out the meters with no appreciable change being made to the air quality of the headspace of the, of the bin. It was beginning to look like the core was much larger than we had anticipated, producing and leaching more gas from the corn than we could handle. With Plan A scrapped, we had to focus on Plan B. Plan B, at a glance, is simple in nature but the ramifications of a misstep could be very costly. The crux of Plan B is to offload the bin from various locations around the periphery of the bin. The locations are determined such that the sidewall pressures are maintained equally as the grain is removed. Correctly done, this will help to prevent the collapse or permanent distortion or egg shaping of the sidewalls. The problems associated with Plan B are the good grain will flow away from the core, leaving most of the core standing, but pieces of the core will unavoidably break off and clog the drain holes. Some of these pieces can be as large as greyhound buses and on fire. They will lodge in the inside of the bin, bin wall where they are inaccessible, inaccessible, burning, and drawing oxygen through the drain opening. The uncontrolled fire will quickly distort the bin wall sheets next to it. The headspace of the bin will rapidly fill with smoke and an even higher concentration of combustible gases. At some point in the operation, fresh air will enter the structure and an explosion will in in inevitably occur. Another threat is the flowing corn is as the flowing corn is drawn from around the core, 
it exposes more of its hot surface to the air, igniting the dust or fines near it. If the grain is not kept moving away from the core, fire can rapidly spread across the surface of the grain, greatly increasing the magnitude of the problem. Also, the freestanding exposed core or column of grain can collapse, kicking up an immense plume of grain dust, touching off a huge grain dust explosion multiplied by the already flammable atmosphere. The taller the spires, the more dust created when they inadvertently collapse, and consequently the bigger the bang. Our experience has taught us that removing the contents of the bin is half the battle. If the pieces of burning core are not separated from the grain immediately, fires will again break out in the stockpiled grain, especially in brisk winds. To combat to combat this huge problem, we designed and built various high-capacity screens to remove the burning core from flowing grain. As soon as the contents leave the bin is put across one of these units, the separated corn is then loaded on trucks and hauled to a remote piling site. Another advantage of screening the grain is that the grain will again be in condition such that a portable grain auger can be used to, to produce weather-resistant cone piles. To ensure that we would have adequate emergency preparedness in the event of extenuating circumstances, we held a meeting with the local fire chief, the insured, and representatives of neighboring fire departments. Our salvage plan was presented in depth and the inherent perils were explained in detail as well. From this information, the joint firefighters devised an action response plan to complement our salvage operation. We all agreed that a media blackout would be best. No preparedness discussions were to take place over police, firefighter, or emergency radio frequencies. Landlines or cellular communications were to be used only. The events of Thursday, September 24th. Thursday morning we moved both grain vacuums south of the bin to a position we felt would be somewhat safe in the event of a collapse. Intake lines were run approximately 80 feet north to the nearest floor opening which was the southernmost opening in the tunnelway. Both vacs were set to discharge into a large grain cart, a measure that would allow the grain vacuums to run continuously by not having to stop after each truck had been loaded. The cart held enough reserve to permit the loaded truck to move out while an empty unit was being positioned. The cart's high-capacity discharge system augured the built-up corn into the newly placed truck faster than the delivery rate of the vac of the grain vacuums. The combined capacity of grain vacuums at this distance was 1,000 bushels loaded every 10 minutes or 6,000 bushels per hour. Once this operation was up and running, an opening was made in the bin 135 degrees clockwise from the truck loadout and 135 degrees counterclockwise from the floor opening that the vacs were currently drawing from. A large amount of corn had previously been removed through the side draw truck loadout. This had caused an unequal sidewall pressure. To equalize this pressure, we needed to drain material from the south floor draw and the newly cut opening at the same rate. In order to measure the possible sidewall distortion produced in the improvised bin unload process, transit were, transits were positioned in four locations as equally spaced as possible around the bin. Their crosshairs were focused on prominent objects at the topmost locations of the bin wall. In this instance, the targets were the corners of the roof vents. Transit readings were taken frequently during the operation. These bins are so large that bin walls can move many feet before it's noticed by the naked eye. This degree of movement would be an indicator of a sudden and catastrophic structural failure. Monitoring the transits would give us some measure of protection and comfort in conducting the recovery operation. We continued unloading at the south vac opening as well as a northeast saw cut opening from where we loaded the material directly onto trucks using front end loaders. Both operations continued into the night. To a cutoff point we judged would not present a sudden hazard for fire watch personnel. It is much safer to work daylight hours if possible to reduce the propensity for accidents and bodily injury. The events of Friday, September 25th. 
Friday the operation resumed at daybreak and continued until around 10 a.m., when large pieces of the core broke free, choking both the south floor opening and the northeast opening. This event curtailed the vacuum operation on the south side of the tank. Fortunately, a large amount of corn had been removed from this opening before becoming plugged. Preparations were made to enlarge the northeast opening to accommodate larger and larger core fragments. One of our high-capacity screeners was positioned relative to the newly enlarged opening. These screeners are designed to remove the burning core pieces, cool the grain, and clean the corn well enough to permit the processed corn to flow through conventional grain augers. It is essential that the auger function without plugging. The piles made by the auger create a weather-resistant pile that can endure rain bouts on a short-term basis. The processed grain is then removed from under the screener by another front-end loader and dumped onto waiting trucks. The loaded trucks would transport the screen grain to a remote stockpiling site where the grain would be fed into a large grain auger to create weather resistant piles. Our goal was to remove the material bucket full by bucket full at all the while hoping that the wall of grain would break off in small sections rather than one large mass. Grain and large pieces of the core flowed from the northeast opening until about 7 p.m. that evening. Bridge corn formed towering spires around the core as the more flowable material moved away and down the slope to the opening. Many of these pillars extended within 10 feet from the top of the sidewall. We were at the most critical point of the operation. We had huge amounts of grain standing almost vertical less than 30 feet from the opening, portions being on fire and intensely hot. And at any time an avalanche of corn could occur, sending plumes of grain dust into the confined space of the bin. Our worst fears were the burning core might ignite the suspending dust, causing a huge explosion, explosion ripping the sidewall, producing catastrophic failure imperiling men and surrounding structures. At dusk the grain quit flowing and we had reached a point where the opening needed to be enlarged sufficiently to accommodate front end loaders, a space about 10 feet wide and 12 feet high. The loader access was made using a cutting torch and required about 90 ten tenths minutes. It was obvious that the grain had temporarily bridged up high and, and could let go at any time. As the opening was being enlarged, darkness overcame us. Large floodlights were positioned and switched on. We removed the lower portion of the newly cut opening, and the grain began flowing once again. Everyone was tense and aware of what could happen as the operation resumed. For safety measures, the pace was slowed somewhat, and each action was made more deliberate there is considerably less time to react at night even for simple situations. The operation continued to about midnight when a mass of fiery core fell off the upper face of the vertical wall. This was followed by a larger section of bridged corn effectively burying the burning core. At this point no fire was evident. We judged that this would be an opportune time for us to get a few hours sleep. The fire department posted a fire watch which was provided our contact numbers if needed. We made plans to be back on site at daylight to continue the operation. The events of Saturday, September 26th. The salvage operation had once again reached a critical phase. Grain had again quit flowing and could no longer be reached from the ground level. 
We have designed and built a mobile ramp that allows heavy equipment to drive up the incline and enter the bin. We position the ramp at the mouth of the opening in preparation for this new phase. The loader operators must now pay very close attention to several hazards besides just driving up the ramp, filling the bucket, and then safely backing down the incline. The dangers that were stated previously still existed, but the perils to the individual operators were increased tremendously. Columns of hard-packed corn extended to within 10 feet of the top of the sidewalls, encasing the hot core. A veritable landslide of grain could bury the entire loader trapping the operator inside. A telescoping forklift was brought in to help break down the freestanding columns in a controlled manner. The forklift operator concentrates his efforts on columns that would most likely cause the greatest problem if they were allowed to fall at random. Only small amounts were broken off at a time to prevent an avala avalanche from occurring. Plans had been made to quickly pull a forklift back down the incline if it were to have been trapped by falling grain. In short order, a rhythm was established and production again peaked. After a time, as grain flowed from around the hot mass, portions of the core would be exposed. Smoke would fill the structure, clouding the operator's vision. As the operation progressed, more and more of the core was exposed to fresh air. Consequently, it would burst into flame, igniting the grain next to it. The real hazard was if a column of grain collapsed, causing a dust cloud, an explosion would ensue. This was an ongoing occurrence until the core was entirely removed. The perforated aeration floor in the path of the loaders was damaged beyond repair. Segments of the floor were scooped up along with the corn and run across the screener. These floor pieces eventually ended up being piled with the separated core.
The loaders were having somewhat of a difficult time with the hardened core mass. The floor had become slippery with the covering of ground, oily corn. The loaders would lose traction when they tried to break up the core into small enough pieces that would fit in the buckets. The telescopic forklift was again brought in to aid in the task. Thankfully, the operation continued throughout Saturday and Sunday, as illustrated, without mishap. Monday, the steel perforated aeration floor was removed and the airway cleaned. In the coming days, the bin interior walls and floor were power washed in preparation for the bin repair crew. All equipment used in this documentary was company owned and operated except for the powered grain cart, telescopic forklift, and the stockpiling auger. This video and its contents are the property of Gregerson Salvage Incorporated. If you have any questions or comments, please call 1-605-947-4888 and ask to speak with Colin, Ryan, or Dennis.